If you've been following entertainment news recently, you may have heard the new Godzilla movie isn't very good. I'm here to tell you, you've heard wrong. Godzilla King of the Monsters is the latest entry in Legendary and Warner Brothers' Monsterverse franchise. It is the worst reviewed and lowest grossing film in the series, but it's also the best thus far. I usually talk about weird old cult films on this channel, but people have been treating this movie wrong, and it's about time someone stood up for it. Before we jump into Godzilla King of the Monsters directly, let's revisit our favorite Scaly Boys American debut, a film entitled Godzilla King of the Monsters. I'm sure that won't be confusing. King of the Monsters was more than just a translated version of Gojira, the film's original title in Japan. The distributors shot new footage in order to introduce an American protagonist. They also removed most of the film's political subtext, specifically references to nuclear weapons. These alterations make the American cut a different film entirely. Gojira hit Japanese theaters less than a decade after the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. A big radioactive lizard terrorizing Tokyo may seem like simple schlock, but the Japanese cut makes it clear that his rampage is a consequence of nuclear testing. The film was shaped by a devastating experience that American audiences simply couldn't relate to. A devastating experience that our government was responsible for. This cultural disconnect is plainly evident in Hollywood's first attempt at a Godzilla film. The studio hired director Roland Emmerich and producer Dean Devlin for the project. The filmmaker's best known for this. Welcome to Earth. And this. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. While the Japanese Godzilla was a transcendent force of nature, the American Godzilla was just a lanky iguana that had to be put down by some good old American firepower. It wasn't the airplanes. It was beauty killed the beast. The 2014 Godzilla reboot was a step in the right direction, but thankfully this year's film used it to springboard into something even better. Many reviewers have accused the film of neglecting its human characters in favor of the monsters, or titans as the film calls them. The Titans do command our attention whenever they're on screen, but this criticism is based on a false premise, namely that the film's human and monster stories exist to one another's detriment. King of the Monsters isn't juggling two distinct narrative threads. It's weaving them into a single story about the relationship between humanity and the Titans. The spectacle actually serves a narrative purpose, in addition to just being rad. Every blast of atomic breath is a threat to humanity's supposed supremacy over the biosphere. This is God's world. He's just living. All of the film's drama stems from the fact that humanity has been displaced as the dominant life form on the planet. If the monsters seem to overwhelm the human characters, maybe that's the point. They're giant monsters, after all. Overwhelming humanity is literally what they do. That's why American audiences have always struggled to engage with Godzilla beyond the surface level. We like to imagine ourselves as a nation of underdogs, but we don't actually like feeling small. But humans are vulnerable creatures. There's always something that makes us feel small. In 1950s Japan, it was nuclear weapons. To propel Godzilla into 21st century America, King of the Monsters had to tap into a slightly different flavor of apocalyptic dread. Gather round, friends, let's talk about climate change. I think the average American moviegoer is more capable of feeling something in 2019 than they were in 1956. Helplessness. As terrifying as the Cold War was, our present situation is different and possibly worse. We don't have to worry about a small mishap igniting nuclear Armageddon. Instead, we just have to watch 
uh, climate change gradually turns our planet inhospitable to human civilization. Our situation doesn't feel precarious, it feels inevitable. And unless all the Titans are found, our planet will perish, and so will we. King of the Monsters presents the Titans as a consequence of environmental devastation. Humans have proven so inept at managing the Earth that the Titans have risen to reclaim it. For most of the movie, human intervention only makes matters worse. The Titan Ghidorah, who represents an invasive species, nearly conquers the planet primarily thanks to a series of human blunders. The turning point comes when everyone decides to follow Dr. Serizawa's advice. Let them fight. Give Godzilla a fighting chance and stand back. They are in a crisis of their own making, and the only solution is to help nature correct their mistakes. I would argue King of the Monsters handles its human characters better than the last film did. At least it doesn't kill its best character in the first act and forget to develop anyone else. So why the difference in critical reception? Legendary promoted Godzilla as a serious thriller worthy of comparison to Jaws. The marketing patted you on the back and said, Don't worry, this is the thinking man's monster movie. It's okay to like it. King of the Monsters said, Let's be honest, you're here to see a radioactive dinosaur fight a space dragon. The film tries to be a sincere political fable while embracing its goofy spectacle which is exactly what a Godzilla film should be. Our planet will perish unless we set Godzilla free. But maybe America isn't quite ready for that. I'm not trying to invalidate all the criticism of this movie. It's not perfect, and you don't have to like it. But it does represent an intriguing step forward in America's relationship with Godzilla. I was lukewarm on the MonsterVerse concept at first, but now I am absolutely on board for Godzilla vs. Kong. Unfortunately, the studio is pushing that film's release date back in response to King of the Monsters' disappointing box office. It would be a shame if my favorite MonsterVerse movie thus far managed to kill the series. Then again, we are destroying the very resources that give us life, so it's best to keep these things in perspective. You may wish to deny it, but your eyes tell you it's true.